What's going on, people? It's your boy, Travis Horror Movies Uncut, Smishes and Slashers, and this is your Big Horror 3 for April 29th of 2024. What's going on, people? We are moving into the month of May, so we got for you the top three new stories you need to know in the horror film world for this week. Okay, people, the three topics you need to know this week is we're going to be talking about those two new films that just dropped the trailers from the clan of M. Night Shyamalan. Him, his daughters, Salika and Ishana, who has her new film, The Watchers, that's coming out. We're going to be talking about those two films. Topic number two, we're going to be talking about The Blair Witch Statement. We found out last week, early last week, that there was a statement that was shared by the Blair Witch original cast and crew that they were reaching out to Bloomhouse and James Wan because they want to make sure they're getting in on this new Blair Witch project they're working on, plus anything else coming in the future. We're going to talk about that. Topic number three. Long Legs, here we are, another crazy creepy teaser. Just got released last week. So now that we've been seeing and hearing from this film all the way since January, let's talk about Long Legs. Let's figure out what's going on. That's topic number three. All right, people, you know how we get down. Submissions and Slashers, Horror Movies Uncut. Make sure you follow us at all the social media platforms at H-M-U-N-C-U-T. Now let's get into topic number one. Okay, so we got M. Night Shyamalan, his daughter, also Ishana. They both just dropped new trailers for their two films that are coming out. Now, we know The Watchers has been in the midst for a minute. We've been seeing trailers. Dakota Fanning's in this movie. We know that The Watchers is a film that a lot of people are going to be looking forward to, but we didn't know at the time that daddy m knight was also going to be dropping his new film and trailer shortly thereafter that film is called trap that film stars josh harnett and let me tell you there's a lot of great stuff to look forward to in both these two films so in the trailer for the watchers we got dakota she's running inside of this stone building that is covered with a a little glass mirror on one side and clearly the inhabitants of this particular place are fearing for their lives and there is something outside of that glass mirror that is looking at them every single night watching their every single move and as what we get from the trailers if you leave that box for a certain amount of time when it gets dark if you're not backed in looks like those things come after you and it looks like Dakota Fanning does a lot of investigating that she's not supposed to. Now, there are a hundred reasons while this film looks fantastic. Um, It is from an original story written by, I believe the guy's name is A.M. Shine. He's an Irish uh, horror writer. Um, The book's kind of polarizing, but it is a bestseller. So a lot of people are going to be excited for Watchers. I think this is going to be one of the most talked about films. And the funny thing about it is even though her father has a film also, this film, even though it's not M. Night's film, seems a little bit more like an M. Night film than what we're going to talk about next, which is his film, Trapped. So the crazy thing about Trapped is Trapped is starring Josh Harnett, and it's kind of this owed to what's been going on in society in the past year with the hype and and craziness of the Taylor Swift heiress tour and it's so insane when you think about the amount of dads that had to take their daughters to these tours but it's also a great thing because it's that engagement that we always want to see between parents and kids but what if your daddy was a serial killer? <laughs> That's what we are talking about in the new film Trap. And it looks is what we find out from the trailer that this film is all, or sorry, this concert that they're going to in the film is all set up to be a trap for Josh Harnett's character. But they don't know it's him. 
We find a bunch of crazy stuff going on in the trailer. There's people falling downstairs. There's police officers rushing through. There's there's a guy trapped inside of a uh, room somewhere, screaming, yelling for his life. So it lets us know that it's some evil, wicked goodiness going on in Trap. And I'm here to say that I'm very, very excited to see both of these films. I hope you guys are too. I don't know. Which one do you think will be better? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Let us know, drop a comment on this video or shoot us a line at H-M-U-N-C-U-T. We'll be back to talk about topic number two. All right, people, welcome back to the Big Horror 3. This is topic number two. Okay, so we're digging in to this Blair Witch statement that was shared last week. Real quick, let's analyze it. Just a small portion. Our film has now been rebooted twice. Both times were a disappointment from a fan box office critical perspective. Neither of these films were made with significant creative input from the original team. That's the key point. So, Pretty much what we have going on here is the original cast and then followed shortly by the original production crew. So director Eduardo Sanchez, uh, Michael C. Williams, who we just met up in Kansas City a couple weeks ago at Panic Fest, uh, Emily Donahue, the whole entire world of the original Blair Witch. They are to the point where they no longer want anything made with the name Blair Witch Project associated without them being involved. This actually has happened before with another film. And in the other film, there was a lawsuit. The lawsuit actually, it went to court and from all accounts there's a good and the bad that goes with this okay so let's finish wrapping up what we're talking about with Blair Witch so my first question to all of you guys is do you think there will be anything that comes from this it's not too hard to understand what these guys are asking for they know there's a new Blair Witch Project movie Uh, James Wan and Bloom House are behind it. It's already been rumored. It's already in discussion. There's probably a budget already created, casting, things like that. <clears throat> the original franchise, they want to be reimbursed. Yes, there's money involved. But from a creative standpoint, and this is one of the things that I talked about with Michael up in. And I didn't even know at the time that this is something we talked about Blair Witch and the legacy and stuff like that. I had no idea that this was in the works in the background or I would have talked so much more and got things on video. It's you you question what decisions were made at the initial stages of the signing over to Lionsgate for the rights of BWP, but you do understand what they mean from the fan perspective. Now, everything that I've watched Blair Witch, I've never shied away from telling people, I'm not the biggest Blair Witch Project fan. I'm not even the biggest found footage fan. For sure have 100% of an appreciation though, for everything that movie has done to horror, continues to do for the genre, and it sparked really its own genre with found footage. It's not the original found footage film, but it's the one that's necessary to establish the genre, to solidify it. So to say that movie is iconic is an understatement in my opinion. Okay, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the film, but there's tons of movies in in every genre that I feel that are like that. But 
As I mentioned earlier, has this ever happened before? Yes. Friday the 13th, there was a lawsuit in 2018. Victor Miller, the screenwriter of the original Friday the 13th, he sued, I believe Lionsgate was involved in that. Well, no, it was Paramount Pictures, Paramount. Pretty much for similar things, seeking to regain rights to the screenplay he wrote for the first film. The lawsuit aimed to terminate a grant of rights that Miller made to the producer under the U.S. Copyright Act, which allows authors to reclaim rights after a certain period. See what I'm saying? The stuff you got to do on the front end, not the back end. The legal battle also involved disputes over the rights to future films. And, and this is the most important thing about this case, the use of the iconic character Jason Voorhees. Bing! So one thing that popped up in my head was, what about the video game? They came out with the video game. They sure did. And when they came out with the video game, boom, the lawsuit also was involved in the video game because it's involving Jason's character. That's one of the reasons why there's not been any updates to the video game since. And that's another reason why there's been talks of more Friday the 13th films. But as this legal dispute still goes on in court to this day, uh, we won't be seeing anything until they get this stuff situated. So interesting. Um, I will be digging in. It's starting to finally get a lot more press. We talked about it on HMU. Starting to get a lot more press now. I'll be digging in later this week to find out if there's been any updates on the Blair Witch statement. So make sure you tune in to the next episode of the Submissions and Slashers podcast because we'll be talking about that. Coming up next, topic number three. Topic number three. We're talking about the film Long Legs. Yeah, you've been seeing the trailers now. You have no idea what's going on. But one thing you do know is it is a serial killer film. We do know that it's following some FBI agent that's got some type of close connections and ties. It's directed by Oz Perkins and it stars Mr. Nicolas Cage. Okay, so from what we've seen so far, don't forget, we've been tracking this film all the way since the beginning of February. The last week of January is when we first got that initial drop on the film. What it showed from the start was every single one of the victims, and it kind of showed how they died and why they died in regards to what it seems like is their father, So there's like a lot of Shining or Amityville vibes that's going on in my head when it comes to the original thought process of seeing this film. After they get finished with showing that we get the teasers starting to show up. The teasers are usually somewhere between 25 to 35 seconds and in every single one of them, you're just getting a weird little glimpse of certain events that are possibly going on. Now, the first one is pretty brutal. You're really getting to see what the killer's kind of doing to some of the victims, but you kind of see the ending part of the victims in that first teaser poster. So even though they're not giving away a lot, it also seems like they are kind of giving away a lot. They are just very, very good with the editing. They're very, very good with the way that they're piecing this all together because it's completely keeping you at a very high level of of being an unease because you're looking at this trying to figure out okay i'm not necessarily seeing the faces of certain people so what's really going on we feel like nicholas cage definitely the killer you kind of hear a mumbled uh kind of crying voice of him uh and one in the latest one of the latest latest teasers um this The teaser's names are like one worded, dirty. That's the only thing I really don't understand so far uh, with Lone Legs. Still trying to figure that portion out. But you do see uh, the room, the FBI agents clearly getting called to something. You do see Cage um, possibly looking at his family. Um, 
you, there's a couple things that you're seeing that's making you get the impression that possibly this FBI agent, if they do have a connection with this, is they are part of this family. Um, there seems to be some satanic worship going on, um, some writing, some Christianity, satanic worship, where there's some writing of, uh, of different symbols. Uh, there's some like Le Leviathan type symbols that are being shown throughout the course of the trailer. So is there some occult stuff? Is there some worship stuff? Kind of hard to see. You don't ever really see like a group of anybody, you know, except for the FBI agents. So I'm assuming this is something that one or two people might be dealing with. So is this a possession movie? which kind of falls more along the lines of like Amityville or is this just some deranged serial killer that just also happens to be involved with the occult or maybe the occult has something else to do with this we should probably get I don't know the film doesn't come out until July so with it now getting into the first week of April, uh, May coming up man we probably get three or four more teasers for something from that where are we going to go from here? Um, they can't expand too much on those teasers because if they do, they will give away the entirety of the film, I feel like. There is a lot that they're giving away, even though it doesn't seem that way. And that is just great work by uh, Neon's people to deliver these teasers and all this information. Even when we're getting the press releases, they look just like what you guys are seeing, man, we're getting like just words, uh, images and videos. But you know what, man? That's why we love this genre so much. So we'll be giving you guys more updates on Lone Legs as we get them. And folks, that is our big for three.